Hi, welcome to the Haskell Weekly Podcast. This show is about Haskell, a purely functional programming language. I'm your host, Cameron Guerra, and with me today we have our wizard expert here at IT Pro TV for Haskell, Taylor Fossag. How are you doing, Taylor? I'm doing well, Cam. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Pretty excited about today. Me too. Uh, I would be more excited if I knew what are we talking about. Oh, well, I was just going to let you figure that out, but (laughs) I will bring it up because I think a very important subject in the Haskell world is stack versus cabal. So I just kind of want to talk about um, kind of stack a little bit more um, and maybe some of the build tools and how that's um, helpful for us. Um, I was reading an article about kind of how stack can give you this project structure out of the box and how that's helpful um, for keeping all Haskell projects in the same format. We use stack here at IT Pro TV to manage our Haskell projects. We really only have one big project and it's got a lot of smaller projects tucked away inside of it. And stack does a great job of keeping those things all in sync along with all the dependencies that we use. Cabal is kind of the other contender in this area, and we don't have any experience as a team here using Cabal directly, but Stack uses Cabal for a lot of things behind the scenes, and in a lot of ways, you could think of it as a smooth veneer on top of the foundation that Cabal provides. So it's like a shiny little outer coating. (laughs) Exactly. Underneath is the real meat of it, which is Cabal. Yeah, I don't know why you have a shiny coating on top of your meat, but whatever floats your boat. (laughs) I was going to go with like a... (laughs) piece of candy you know kind of yeah. like the m M&M, like the shiny green out, outer and then cabal is like the chocolate center yeah it's delicious the chocolate center of haskell project development <laughs> <laughs> yeah well i've heard you know, a lot of things being relatively new to haskell um you know stack made it kind of easy to understand like oh this is how i make something new um i've tried to i've, I've worked with stack trying to make a Haskell hackle blog and other stuff like that. And it seems to be really useful um, when I'm trying to like figure out what I need to use, what dependencies I have. Um, I just kind of tell it, hey, install this. And then it's there. There's no um, jumping through any hoops. Um, and why why is that? I, I know we have this thing called Stackage. Kind of how does that help us? So Stackage is a set of Haskell packages that are known to all work together. So you mentioned Hackle. Hackle as part of its One of Hackle's dependencies is Pandoc, which is a thing that lets you convert document formats from one to the other. So if you have a markdown file and you want to produce HTML, which is extremely common when writing a blog, Pandoc is a tool that will let you do that and about a thousand other things. Pandoc requires a lot of dependencies and it can be hard to find versions of all of those things that work well together. So if you want to start a blog and you want to use Hackle to produce it, it can be challenging to find all the dependencies you need and all the versions of those dependencies that all work together. Stackage has done all that work for you. So when you tell Stack, hey, install Hackle, Stack already knows, yeah, I can install all these dependencies together and they're just going to work. That's in comparison to something like Cabal, at least older versions of Cabal. I don't know how things have changed recently, but Cabal works by resolving dependencies. So each dependency has a version constraint that says, I work with this broad range of packages. And Cabal tries to pick a specific version of each one that the package claims it will work with. This is basically working on the honor system. So there's no guarantee that package A will actually work with package B, even though it says it will. With Stackage, that work is done ahead of time and the maintainers are notified when something doesn't actually work. But with Cabal, it's possible to get into a situation where you try to install something that says it should work and it doesn't, and you're left trying to figure out what went wrong. And this is kind of historically in the Haskell community called Cabal Hell. And this Mm -hmm. is something that Stack helps you avoid. I see. Yeah. So being having a background in JavaScript to a little extent, um, we use NPM and some forms of NPM like there was kind of this hell of you have this one package you're specifying, but it's installed a newer version of this other package and you have all this issue and, and they kind of, they've got package lock now and all that stuff. And I haven't necessarily spent enough time in JavaScript lately to, to really understand or, or appreciate any of that stuff mm-hmm. um, because we've been working in Haskell. So in Haskell, I've had stack, so I haven't necessarily had to experience Cabal hell, mm-hmm. but I have heard fun stories um, <laughs> and you know, that's nothing against Cabal. It's just part of how they do things. And um, I, I appreciate that Stack 
allowed us to kind of not have to worry about that kind of coming into Haskell and being a beginner, right? Like mm -hmm. Stack, I feel like makes the beginner's life a lot simpler. I definitely agree with that. It's one less thing to worry about when you're getting started with Haskell. You don't have to wonder, will these packages build together? You know that they will. Um, it's also nice, you mentioned NPM. Um, one of the things that NPM does that Haskell can't really do is that if you have two um, packages that depend on different versions of some sub package, they can just install both versions of that sub package and say, sure, whatever. Package A will get this one version, package B will get this other version. In Haskell, you can't do that because all of your packages have to agree with each other about every dependency that they're using. So you can't say, Hackle is going to use version one of text and Pandoc is going to use version two. It won't work because the, the types won't line up. It's also worth mentioning that another thing Stack does that um, NPM also does is that it kind of quarantines your local projects dependencies from your global installation. So anyone who's worked with a JavaScript project is familiar with the node modules folder. Ouch. <laughs> Which is a giant folder with you know hundreds of folders in there, one for each dependency. Do we have an ouch noise? We're not. <laughs> So node modules is a giant folder with hundreds of dependencies in there. And it's separate from your kind of global installation. And a lot of times people will install things globally like Bower or um, ESLint, some kind of tool that's just convenient to have on the command line. In the old days with Cabal, it installed most of your Haskell packages globally. So if you were working on two projects and they needed different versions of a dependency, too bad, you mm -hmm. can't really do that. Eventually they introduced this concept of a sandbox, which is a lot like the node modules thing, the folder. Okay. But the sandbox augmented your global packages. It was in addition to all of the global stuff. So if you accidentally installed some global package that wasn't the one you wanted in your project, again, you're stuck. You have to go remove that global package and install it locally instead. Oof, That's, that, that seems rough because then that could cause mismatches in people's local environments to what's happening in production too. I feel like that's yeah. super dangerous. Very dangerous and annoying. Right. And I feel like we've uh, had the, op like we've kind of circumvented that because, you know, we Dockerize things. So mm -hmm. in our development locally, like we Dockerize everything. So all of our packages, if they were installed globally, even would be focused on our container that we're working in. So we hopefully would be able to avoid that said Exactly. Issue. I don't think we would have run into this particular problem even if we were using Cabal instead of Stack because we're inside a Docker container. Like you said, a global package inside a Docker container is still kind of local to that Docker container. Right. Newer versions of Cabal have added this new way of building stuff where it completely ignores your global package database and only uses one that's sandboxed for the project. They call this Nix style local builds which is taking a page out of the Nix handbook, which does everything for your entire system like this. Cabal focuses just on Haskell packages. Interesting. Yeah, our uh, coworker Cody, he told me that I should uh, make a Nix joke. <laughs> so I'm glad you brought that into the picture. Can we Nix that Nix joke? Uh, I can't Nix it now. <laughs> I have to. I, uh, let's just we'll move on anyways. <laughs> I tried. I'm not as funny as uh, some of our fellow peers here at IT Pro TV. But, uh, you know, I do what I can. I try to stay Stay with it. Stack in Cabal. We've kind of heard um, kind of the underlying side of Cabal, um, which has been nice to to kind of understand more of like what happened and why you know global dependencies and stuff like that were kind of causing issues. If you were going to give advice to anyone kind of starting in Haskell, um, whether they have programming experience or not, like what would be like the best thing about Stack for them to to look into? I dropped the it, bomb on you. It's hard for me to pick one thing. I feel like there are at least two. And the first one is that Stack is going to manage your compiler installation along with all of your dependencies. So Cabal doesn't install GHC for you. You have to do that yourself. And then you can point Cabal at the GHC that you want to use. What's the nicety? You know, like, mm -hmm. ooh, this is really cool that Stack did this for me. Right. It's something that's going to be invisible in that you're not going to end up in a situation where you're stuck because some dependencies don't work out. And that's a hard thing to 
sell too hard on because it's the lack of a problem. But the problem itself is really annoying and very difficult for a beginner to solve because they don't really have the tools or the expertise to figure out what happened and how to fix it. And Stack, for the most part, just sidesteps the whole thing. Occasionally, you do get into a situation where you want a package that isn't on Stackage. And that's when things get complicated from the Stack side. With Cabal, pretty much any package, well, really any package is going to be installable with Cabal eventually. Maybe you need to work out some dependencies. but Anything on Hackage, pretty much. You exactly. Can, you can find in use. Mm -hmm. And that's also true with Stack. But if something isn't on Stackage, then you don't get that nicety of it just working automatically. It may work really well without any extra work, but it might not work at all. And then you have to figure out figure that out. Mm -hmm. And that can be hard for a beginner to do. Gotcha. So... Yeah, we, we have a little bit of that in our code base. Um, based on our uh, latest L resolver that we have, we don't have um, some of our dependencies. So we had yeah. to bring in... Like Hapstack. Hapstack, right. Um, and so that was kind of uh, like, it's kind of uses this extra dependency syntax kind of thing in, in the stack.yaml. Mm -hmm. um, and, and for a, a beginner, like what would be... Um, just something to be aware of when when trying to figure out what what do I do with this extra dependency? What does that look like? I think that Stacks documentation does a good job of explaining what these extra dependencies are, why you might need them, and how to put them into your Stack YAML file. Also, when you make a new project with Stack, it includes a Stack YAML file that has a bunch of comments in it that say, if you need to include an extra depth, this is what it would look like, and this is why you might need it. There's also a lot of good blog posts on this topic. Um, this is something that a lot of people have run into where they're working with Stack and they're enjoying it, and then they run into a package that they need to install that's not on Stackage, and they tell you how to do that. So I would say turn to Google. Oh, good old Google. That's <laughs> an engineer and developer's best friend. Mm -hmm, sure right is. There. Stack Overflow, I mean, any, any blog posting platform is great mm -hmm. um, they, they do a really good job i know for me that's been something that's really really been helpful it's a big topic cabal versus stack in, in the haskell world we want everyone to know we love both um <laughs> we just use stack so we're more familiar with it why do you think necessarily this is such a, a hot topic me personally i don't feel too strongly one way or the other and we're kind of we've been posing this as a cabal versus stack you know discussion kind of flame or discussion that we're we're hinting at here but Really, there are other uh, entrants in this battle. There's Nix, which you, which we mentioned, because Cabal kind of borrowed this concept of Nix-style local builds. But you could use Nix to build Haskell packages, and a lot of people do. You can also use some more niche tools. I know that there's one called Mafia. You could also use GHC directly, which works great if you don't have a lot of dependencies. Um, GHC has a dash dash make flag that makes it behave more like a build tool than a compiler. Um, and I'm sure there are many other build tools that I am not aware of or that I'm failing to mention right now. That being said, Stack and Cabal are kind of the big players. And I think Stack has done a great job of making Haskell development accessible to a wider audience, which was its goal from the get-go. Mm -hmm. In a previous job, I was very gung-ho about using Haskell, but I worked on a team that primarily worked with Ruby code. And I didn't feel comfortable suggesting to them that we use Cabal as our build tool because I ran into so many of its sharp edges with failing to install a dependency or polluting the global package database, any of those things. Mm -hmm. When Stack came out, I thought, you know what, I would be okay subjecting the rest of the team to this tool because right. it generally works pretty well. As to why it's such a contentious topic in the community, I think that a lot of people have invested time into learning Cabal and its quirks and mastering it. And when there's a new tool that doesn't require all of that expertise, it can make you feel like you either you've wasted some of your time or that people need to learn the same things that you learned in order to, you know, get onto your level. Right. And so it's kind of undercutting their expertise. However, I'm not a psychologist. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> I'm sure there are many more reasons why. Well, I appreciate your time, Taylor. I appreciate you being able to take the time and just talk to us about Stack and about Cabal and hear the kind of some of the, the quirks with both even and how we can um, you know, use that in our day-to-day, -day, even if we're uh, 
expert or we are a beginner because um, there's some niceties with, with Stack. And, and if you use Cabal, that's great. There's nothing, no hard feelings. Yeah. All right. Thanks for being with us, Taylor. And thank you all for listening to the Haskell Weekly Podcast. This has been episode five, and I've been your host, Cameron Guerra. Uh, if you liked our show, find out more at our website, haskellweekly.news. Thanks again for listening and see you next week. Thank you.